I just finished a brutal ride on my smart trainer and I did a cool augmented virtual ride riding up the Paso Jow. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. I used it on Roe V um, and it was a killer workout. The cool thing about the augmented route, it's actual footage and then the riders that you're racing against are superimposed. So it's virtual riders. Uh, that you're riding against. And so, cool way to break up the monotony. This is gonna be a very simple video. If you're looking for in-depth video about a particular trainer and how it stacks up on wattage and all the science behind how it works and, and showing you graphs and charts, click to another video, because this, <laughs> this is not the one. I'm really talking more for maybe beginners out there, someone who, isn't really familiar about what exactly is a smart trainer and is it a good investment? What are these different apps? What's Rovi? How does it work? Why do you use it? So if you're interested in that, stick around. So what is a smart trainer? It's really simple. A smart trainer responds and alters the speed and the effort that you're putting into a ride automatically for you. Now, it needs to be connected to something to tell it to do that. So just look at it this way. You're on your bike, you're riding, and it's connected to the trainer, and you decide that you want to ride a virtual route. And so this route, maybe it's through the mountains in Italy, right? And so you'll actually you'll have to connect to an app that tells your, it speaks through Bluetooth or Ant technology. It'll speak to your trainer and tell your trainer what to do. And so you get on your bike and you start pedaling and the screen in front of you is moving and it's as if you're riding. If you're going downhill, then the resistance on the trainer is gonna back off and you're gonna be pedaling a lot faster. Uh, you can and be moving a lot faster. As the gradient increases, then the trainer is going to lock down and make you put in a lot more effort automatically. You don't have to do anything. And, and so really that's kind of the, that's very simple what a smart trainer is versus a passive trainer. A passive trainer just has resistance and you really have to control what you're doing on that passive trainer with your gears and, and how fast you're pedaling, how hard you're pedaling, and then what gear you're in will alter the effort that you're putting in. The other thing about a smart trainer, besides just the what I said, you could ride a virtual route and it automatically will do those things for you. The other really cool thing about it that I like is it will automatically keep you at a predetermined exertion level. You'll have workouts that are designed around power and you load those workouts up through an app, it talks to your trainer, and the trainer automatically adjusts. So if you speed up your pedaling, the trainer adjusts so that you stay at a certain exertion level. If you slow down your pedaling, it, the trainer adjusts so it keeps you within that exertion le level. In a way, it's kind of hard because you can't escape it. So, you know, if your exertion level is, say, 200 watts, if you pedal fast or you pedal slow, it's gonna, you can't escape it. It's keeping you at the output of 200 watts. What I really like about that in, in a lot of regards is it takes away a lot of the boredom factor. You know, I can put on, you know, an hour, hour and a half on the bike, on the trainer, and I can watch a movie and, and it's just not quite so boring during these winter months that I'm on the trainer in the garage. That's the benefits of a smart trainer. It To me, it's a much more difficult workout. I'm getting a lot more benefit out of it. It's automatic. It takes some of the thought process out where you can race against other people. You could do virtual races, these augmented routes. It's just a lot more fun. So let's talk about the smart trainer that I have. I got the Cyclops Hammer 2, the Cyclops H2. It's a direct drive trainer. If you're not familiar with what that is, some trainers, you actually just leave the wheel on your bike, the rear wheel, and you hook it up. And there's a, a roller that connects up to the wheel. And so you're actually, when you're pedaling and spinning your rear wheel, it's working against that weighted roller. 
the direct drive, you the trainer actually has a cassette on the trainer. So what you do is you take your wheel wheel off of your bike and connect your chain and your rear derailleur onto the trainer, onto the cassette on the trainer. That was another thing for me that I, I'll be honest, early on I thought, well, I'm just not even sure how to do that. But I can tell you right now, it's so easy to do. There's instructions that come, like I say with mine, with the H2, they walk you right through what to do. You need a couple of tools. I've got them here, there was nothing to it. This is a chain whip and this, real simple, is basically a wrench that goes around your cassette and holds it in place. It, and so it kind of holds that cassette so that it doesn't spin. And then this is a cassette, I don't know if you can see this, but for the cassette, uh, this is the tool that slides in. And so it slides into the locking ring on your cassette and those teeth lock in there. And then you use a wrench, real simple. I just used a crescent wrench on mine. And then you just, uh, you know, you turn this with the wrench and you tighten it up and you tighten that cassette on there. I'll put you a link to an instructional video so you can see how to do that. Uh, you know, I did it in probably, I don't know, less than, easily less than 10 minutes, probably less than five minutes. The app that I use is Rovi. I hope I'm saying that right, R-O-U-V-Y. And that's because that's what's recommended by Cyclops. In mine, I actually had a code. I got, I wanna say maybe a month that I got free free use. And so help me get familiar with it. Help me look around, help me figure out what to do. And uh, I signed up after that. It's just a great app. Very simple to use. A key feature that I like about Rovi is that you can take workout files and download them and then put them directly into Rovi. You just download the file and then you'll put that file, once you download it, um, I just have a folder that I put all my workouts into, it's, it's, and I use the ERG files, and so these are specific for smart trainers. There's an import function inside Rovi, I click it, I have my file, and then um, I simply double click that, and it uploads it right into Rovi. And there you have it. It's ready to go. Oh, and another cool thing. The Cyclops H2, it also has built-in cadence. And so I don't have to, you don't have to have a separate cadence sensor or anything. So you've got cadence, you've got your speed, you've got your power. Get you a heart rate strap, you've got your heart rate. Everything connects in via Bluetooth on that Rovi app. And so all of your data is there. Just a really cool tool for me. It's something that I really like, and I just feel like it's it's been very helpful. Look, bottom line is this. If you're on the fence about a smart trainer, if you're wondering, eh, is it really worth it? I mean, I'm getting by with my passive trainer. Do I really need the smart trainer? Here's what I would tell you. The smart trainer, you won't regret. It is a whole night and day difference. They are more money, but you know, you get what you pay for, in my opinion. The reason they're more money is because they just have so much more to offer. I have enjoyed the Cyclops H2. All the stuff I read came was absolutely backed up by the product. I opened the box, I put the cassette on, hooked my bike up, turned on Rovi, did everything, everything synced up. I had zero headaches. So check it out. Hey, I hope this video helped. I hope that there's some information in here that can help you uh, make decisions about your training. Thanks for watching. See ya.